Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments, my name is Alan and we'd like to share with you the experience that we had and our thoughts about what we consider to be the cheapest yet good quality 24 port gigabit switch available from TP-Link, how good it is and which scenarios might actually be greatly benefited from using these switches. This video might also enlighten you in which is the switch that may be best suited for you. Truth be told, I have used dozens of these switches either for me or for the companies that I have worked in the past. And let me tell you why. These switches may be a great alternative for your home, your business, and even medium-sized companies requiring very few setup scenarios and restrictions within their networks. We're talking about this 24-port, 1 gigabit Ethernet TP-Link switch. You'll receive in the box the user's guide, the power cable, and the mounting brackets. You're not gonna need anything else, as you may opt for desktop or rack mounting. This model is the one with 24 ports with no advanced features as TP-Link states. If you want one with some extended features such as VLANs, where you can organize your network segments with a little more control, there is this other version, currently with just a $10 difference. By the way, it might be worth it. Please note that none of these are compatible with the Omata network controller or SDNs. Particularly, the unit I was replacing with this one was burnt due to lightning and, of course, our failure to wire the proper grounding. It wouldn't have taken a lot of time and the units that were properly grounded were not affected. For those of you who don't know much about networking and complex equipment like we've seen in our channel, these switches will interconnect your computers, smart devices, entertainment systems and much more, just plugging them to any port and letting the switch do its job. It does so very well at a rate of 1 gigabit per second. And let's consider that today's home needs a wiring cabinet, rack or structure where all your networking cabling converges. And that is exactly how we advise you to do it, as it will remove any troubleshooting difficulties when there is a failure and you have to go to several locations to see if there is a problem there. Try to eliminate as many control points as possible. Back to 1 gigabit per second, yes, there are locations where you can actually get more than that for internet access, and you might end up asking yourself, do I need then a 2.5 gigabit per second or even a 10 gigabit per second router and switch? The short answer is yes, if and only if the computer you're gonna connect also gets 2.5 gigabit per second, either a router or a computer, and your ISP, of course, gives you 2.5 gigabit per second ports for each client or if each client is evenly getting what you need, such as you can see for example in this graph, where each computer gets a fair share of such good internet connection. Like you see, many situations. Normally what happens is that you get, for example, 1.5 gigabit per second internet access, and as all your clients converge into your ISP's router or optical terminal, each port not necessarily needs to have 2.5 gigabit per second ports. This is a question that we've been asked a lot. It will actually make a difference if for short periods of time each client needs to get the most out of your ISP. To put this in perspective, the previous version of the Fantastic Fire TV Cube features a 100 megabit per second fast Ethernet adapter. Yes, 100 megabit per second. And I have rarely seen it reach 40 or 50 megabit per second streaming 4K content. When streaming within my network at higher bit rates, this Fire TV Cube reaches 60 megabit per second. So you see where I'm getting with these entertainment devices. Same thing with streaming. Very different if you constantly had to transfer big files from one computer to another one or store your backups in your NAS. There, 1 gigabit per second is good, and dedicated channels from one point to another one within your network makes these switches the best alternative for wired networks in most small business scenarios. Again, like we've always compared networking to highways and traffic. Back to this switch in particular, our experience has always been great with nothing more to add for those who need good speeds for tasks beyond browsing, such as LAN backups of a few gigabytes each day, downloading fairly big files from the internet, synchronizing big cloud storage, having a few access points converge into it, and many simultaneous video conferencing systems active. Let's not forget voice over IP as we've been able to test extensively with this switch. Power consumption is about 4 to 5 watt at its lowest, and it will increase at a rate of 0.5 watts per active port. You might ask yourself, I do have critical tasks running on my network, I better invest in a high-end switch. Well, yes and no. If your network is small enough for you to not need to have it separated into different VLANs, network segments and configure complex routing, there is no need. 
This switch will do what most people need in most networks. On the other hand, you might actually have or need devices that need to be powered by the same networking switch using the data cable. That is what you might have heard as power over ethernet. But power over ethernet switches are more expensive. Normally you might need a couple access points, a couple IP cameras, and maybe a few IP phones. So you can go for smaller power over ethernet switches and pair it with a basic switch as this one as complement for your workstations not needing PoE. These type of switches still have a place among modern networks, particularly in the very important place where wired network access compared to Wi-Fi is not only inevitable but mandatory. It is very unlikely, for example, that these switches freeze, fail to communicate or get damaged like mine did due to an electrical surge. That's why I give them such an importance among many companies where budget and limited resources are in place. And let's get real, there are many businesses in those situations and there is nothing to risk if you do so. In one particular scenario where I have a couple of these working, it concentrates the traffic of 19 computers, 35 mobile devices on the Wi-Fi network, 8 voice over IP grant stream phones, and receives the remote connections from remote points of sale that need to be active all day and cannot have any interruptions as we run terminal service in our small Windows server. This is just to put it in perspective of how important these switches are in small businesses. Thank you very much for watching our videos, we invite you to leave the comments below and remember that you incredibly support us by hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. See you next time.